Hey guys, this is Rajon and in today's video we are going to have a look at the detailed explanation of the chapter named Lost Spring. Now this story was written by Ennis Jung and this chapter is a part of our book named Stories of Stolen Childhood. This chapter is about two stories of two different kids who lost their childhood fun and were bound to live a difficult life. So let's have a look. The name of the first story is Sometimes I Find a Rupee in the Garbage. In the first story, the poet talks about a boy named Shaheb whom she finds looking for something in the garbage dumps of her neighborhood every morning. Shaheb's old home was in Dhaka and they had to leave that place after their homes and fields got destroyed by many storms. The poet once asked Shaheb why does he search for things in the garbage and in reply when Shaheb said he doesn't have anything else to do, the poet advised him to go to school despite knowing how unworthy that advice would be looking at his current situation. Then Saheb said that there is no school in his neighborhood and just in a fun way the poet asked him whether he would come to a school if she builds one. Then Saheb obviously said yes as he had never been to school before but it just became a little embarrassing for the author when a few days later Saheb asked whether her school was ready or not. Then the poet just said that it does take some time to build a school but in mind she knew that she had made kind of a fake promise to Shahev of building a school. But she also believes that kids like Shahev have hundreds of such fake promises in their lives which never really come true. After getting to know Shahev more closely, the author got to know Shahev's full name which was sahib -e alam And the meaning of his name wasn't known to Shahev himself but the author knew that it means the lord of the universe. But she felt a little hesitant explaining the meaning of his name to Saheb as he would probably feel sad to know that. I mean how would he feel knowing the fact that he roams around the streets with barefoot looking for things in the garbage and his name means the lord of the universe. Quite ironic isn't it? So there were a few more kids like Shaheb who used to roam around like this and once the author asked one of the other kids why wasn't he wearing chappals. And he answered that his mother doesn't allow him to do that. Some other kids were like, it's a tradition not to wear chappals and stay barefoot. Hearing all this, the poet started wondering whether it's genuinely a tradition to stay barefoot or it's a state of serious poverty which they have expressed as a ritual. The author then tells a nice short story of a boy from Udipai whose father was a priest. That boy also didn't have shoes so he used to come to temple and used to pray for a pair of shoes regularly. Around 30 years later when the author visited that place in the temple, he saw that the boy right now has a nice pair of shoes, he is well dressed and goes to school. So looking at him the poet felt really happy for him as his prayers of getting a pair of shoes was filled. But the poet also felt bad thinking about how the prayers of boys like Shaheb never gets filled. After getting to know some of the wreck pickers of our neighborhood, the poet once went to Simapuri which is near Delhi. Talking about that place, the poet says that thousands of people came here from Bangladesh in 1971 and Saheb's family was among these. These people have been living here for more than 30 years in the houses which are made of tarpaulin, roofs of tin and also they have a poor drainage system all around. Around thousands of wreck pickers live here. People just have a ration card which allows them to buy grains and have name in the voter list. And that's more than enough for these people to survive as they believe it's a better position to be in rather than having a field with no grains which they had in Bangladesh earlier. Now it's obvious that kids growing up in such conditions don't get a joyful childhood. They become wreck pickers at a very young age which is nothing but the method of survival in Shimapuri. For wreck pickers the garbage is like gold for them. Shahif even finds a 10 rupee notes sometimes in the garbage which gives him extreme joy and also motivates him to look for more. Now the most important thing here is that the garbage means a different thing for the children than what it means for their parents. I mean the parents obviously feel that it's just a basic source of survival but for the children it's a thing of wonder as sometimes they find a coin or even a 10 rupees note in it. The poet then talks about another day when she saw Saheb watching two people playing tennis in their neighborhood. Shahib used to like that game and he also had a pair of torn tennis shoes which someone gave to him as there was a hole in one of them. But for Saheb who have always walked barefoot even the torn shoes are great. But despite being able to watch that game of tennis so closely it's pretty far away from him which really is a sad thing. Another morning the poet met Saheb when he was going to a tea stall with a canister in his hands 
and he had started working there. But when the poet asked Saheb whether he likes his job, then Saheb's face had just all the answers in it. He had definitely lost the feeling of freedom after he started working under someone else. Saheb was at least his own master when he used to roam around by himself looking for things in the garbage. But now, after getting his job, he isn't free anymore. This is where the first story ends, which was mainly about Saheb. Now, what we have to understand is that this is not a one-way story. I mean, there are multiple little parts in the story in which the condition of Seema Puri, the Saheb's rag picking, and his tea stall job experience are explained separately. Now, if you genuinely want good marks, then you must have a proper understanding of all the parts of this story. Hope you understand. Now, let's have a look at the second story. I want to drive a car. In this story, the poet talks about another poor boy named Mukesh who wishes to be a motor mechanic and wants to learn to drive a car. But his dream seems to be extremely hard to achieve looking at his present situation. He lives in a town named Firuzabad which is known as the center of India's glass blowing industry and every other family of that place including Mukesh's family is engaged in making bangles. And here people have been making things like bangles and welding glasses for many many years. People in Simapuri don't know that it's illegal for children like Saheb to work like this and probably that's the reason why almost 20,000 children work around fences which results in losing the brightness of their eyes at a very early age. Once the poet went to visit Mukesh's house which was being rebuilt, both of them went through stinking lanes choked with garbage and finally they reached the house which really didn't have clean and good rooms. It had crumbling walls and doors and also no windows. Overall the house was in really poor condition and in this both the family members and their pets live. When they reached there was a young woman who was cooking the evening meal for the family who was the wife of Mukesh's elder brother and was called Bahu of the family. When any elder enters inside their house as per the tradition and ritual she veils her face with her sari. Her husband was an improvised Bengal maker and was a tailor earlier. And despite of working in both the fields for a very long time, he could neither re-innovate a house nor could send his two sons to schools. All he did was just taught his sons how to make bangles. Mukesh had a grandmother as well who saw her own husband go blind with the dust from polishing the glass of bangles. She believes that whatever position her son is in right now is nothing but his own destiny. People in every house, every street and every yard of Firuzabad just make bangles. These are of multiple colors like sunny gold, peddy green, royal blue, pink etc. People bring tons of raw materials to make bangles in four wheel handcrafts and then in the dark hutments with oil lamps they convert the welding pieces of colored glass into bangles. The poet then talks about a young girl named Savita who was making bangles. She also says that this bangle symbolizes auspiciousness in marriage. There was an elderly woman as well with that girl who never had one full meal in her entire life. And her husband with only the skill of making bangles just built a house for the family to live and nothing else. The tradition of working only to make bangles from a very young age has almost stopped people of Firuzabad from dreaming and doing anything big in life. And some people there believe that even if they try to work on anything else, then the police will probably catch them and say it's illegal for them. Moreover, they don't have any leader among them who can make a team and start any other business. After understanding the complete situation of the people over there, it seemed there are two different worlds in this place. One was of the poor people who make bengals and can't do anything else for their living. And the other world was of shahukars. Those middlemen, policemen and the politicians. And it seems like the people of second world have literally stopped the poor people of Firuzabad from dreaming and believing that they can be more than just Bengal makers and can have a better life. The poet ends this story by sharing this small conversation with Mukesh in which Mukesh tells him that he will walk into a garage which is quite at a distance from his home and he would be a motor mechanic. And when the poet asked him whether he wishes to fly a plane, then with a little confused feeling, he said that he doesn't, as few planes fly over Firuzabad. So these were the two stories of this chapter. As you can see, in both the stories, it's all about how a kid lost his childhood fun. In one story, it was all about Shaheb and in the other story, it's all about Mukesh. And you probably already have understood the fact that the word spring in the name of this chapter represents the childhood as this chapter talks about the lost childhood fun. 
So if you have any confusion or doubt related to any part of this chapter, then let me know in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care.